Hello, welcome to the sessions on transmission and uh, distribution. And in this session, I'll be dealing with some more uh, problems in distribution systems. So in the previous session, we saw uh, how you can specify the power factor using either the with respect to the receiving end voltage or with respect to the voltage of the load bus. So in this session, we'll uh, continue with the uh, examples we saw earlier. So this is Professor Uma Rao uh, from RV College of uh, Engineering, Bangalore, uh, bringing you the sessions under the ages of PTU eSectiona program run by the e-learning center. So let us consider some more examples and how to solve it. And as I told you, these problems are basic network theory problems. Yeah. So uh, actually, if you know basic network theory, you can easily solve all these. And um, I hope you get the logic behind the approach to the problems. That is the focus of all my uh, uh, lectures. So let's consider this example. So the loading on a distributor is as shown. So I have three loads. The distributor is a two core cable for which the resistance and reactants is 0.35 ohms and 0.185 ohms per 1200 meters of cable run. So I want to maintain a voltage of 420 volts at point B. That is the farthest point. Okay. So what should be my sending end voltage? What should be my sending end voltage? And it said that all the power factor is referred to the far end voltage at D. So we discussed, you know, how you can refer the power factor with respect to D. Though I, I, I personally feel it's like a misnomer. The power factor is always between the voltage and current of the component. But anyway, let's uh, stick on to what uh, is used commonly. Now, look at the three uh, loads. So this is 40 amperes, 0.8 PF lagging 10 amperes again 0.5 pf lagging and uh, 30 amperes upf clear simple problem or uh, can uh, do you get a approach to the problem how to solve it so as i said the first thing is you draw the figure here it's already given so I want to calculate VA. So what will be VA? VA will essentially be VD. That is the receiving end voltage plus drops. The total drop in the line. Okay. But then see, and firstly, you know why this is called a distributor because I have tappings in between. If it's a feeder, I will not have tappings in between. Okay. So I know this current is I3. This is I3. Then this would be plus I2, I3 plus I2. Okay, because I2 is tapped here. And this would be plus I1. That is I2 plus I3 plus I1. So I have to basically determine what is I1, I2, I3 and the impedances of these sections. Find out the voltage drop in them, add it to the receiving end voltage and I'll get the same thing. Simple. So the impedance of the cable is 0.35 plus J0.185 per 1200 meters. So the first section is 80 meters. So I 
multiply by 80 by 1200. And uh, so I have put it in both polar form and rectangular form. Normally I do that whenever I deal with complex numbers. The number I represent in both polar and rectangular so that I can pick up whichever is needed at any time. So I would say you all also do the same. So if it's for multiplication, use the polar form. It's for addition, you use the rectangular form. So once for all, you can convert everything in Q. Now, the section BC is um, 100 meters. So we multiply by 100 by 1200. And I get the impedance. Now, section CD is also 100 meters. So Z2 will be equal to Z3. Or rather, Z3 will be equal to Z2. I have already computed Z2. Next, you're given I1 is 40 at a power factor of 0.8 lag. Again, this is the power factor, cos phi. So this is sine phi. Sine phi will be 0.6. And this minus, do you recollect why this minus? Because it is lag. Okay, lagging, lagging load. So this works out to 40 at an angle of minus 36.86 degrees. And in rectangular form, this is what it is. Next, I2 is 10 amperes at a power factor of 0.5. So sine is 0.866. So this works out to 9.9 uh, .9 at an angle of minus 57, which in rectangular coordinates is this. 4.95 minus J8.57 amperes. And I3 is 30 amperes UPF. So it is 30 minus J0 amperes. Clear? So, as before, as before, we will take the voltage at the receiving end as the reference. So that is 420 plus J0. Now voltage at C. So let's get back to our diagram. So this is C, right? So let me choose a different color. Yeah. So this is C. So the voltage at C will be VD plus the drop here. And the voltage at B will be VC plus the drop in this 100 meters. And voltage at VA will be VB plus the drop in this 80 meters. And we already know the currents. So in section CD, it is I3. In BC, it is I2 plus I3. And in AB, it is I1 plus I2 plus I3. Okay. So, yeah. So voltage at VC is VC is equal to VD plus I3 Z3. So VD J0 because I have taken it as the reference. And I3 we have already found out. This is I3 and this is Z3. Right? Since I have to multiply these two, I have converted it into polar forms. And then I multiply. So when you multiply in polar form, what do you do? You multiply the magnitudes and you add the angles. Always remember that. You multiply the magnitudes and add the angle. So I have here 420 and this is 0.93 is 30 into 0 0.03, 31. And when I add these two, I get 26.56. So this is my VC. I have VC. Next, VB is VC plus the current in the next section is I2 plus I3 into Z2. So I have VC. Then I have um, this, this whole thing is VC. Then I have I2 and I have I3 into Z2. Into Z2. So again, be careful. Okay, a lot of complex numbers. And uh, you can expand everything. And I get VB is this 
421.912 plus 0 0.6. Do it systematically, okay? One from one end. You do it very systematically. Next. What is VA? VB plus 1. I, uh, plus I1 plus I2 plus I3. This is the sending end current into Z1. So this is I1 and this is uh, I2 and this is I3 and this is Z1. This is Z1. So when you do the simplification, I get VA is 423.77. Angle is negligible, very small. So to maintain a receiving end voltage of 400 volts, your sending end uh, voltage should be 423.7 volts. Clear? Now, let me draw your attention to something here. So you see the sending end voltage is 423. Let us now just see what I want. So sending end voltage is 423, right? Then, the node after that, it's around 421 and the farthest node is, so VC is around 420 and VD is 420. So you see, as you move away, the voltage drops more and more because this is a radial feeder. So we saw that no, in a radial feeder, the voltage drops as you move along the feeder, radial distributor. Clear? Now, let's consider uh, one example of a ring main distribution. So, you can solve, as after all, it's a network theory problem. You can solve in different ways. So, I have solved it by a particular method and uh, we'll see what it is. So, consider a ring main distribution. ABC. The power factors are all with reference to voltage at point A. That means this point 6 PF, whatever this angle is, this is with respect to point A. Find the currents in each section. This is the question. So this is my feeding end. This is my feeding end. And these are the two loops. So this is 1.4 plus J 1.4 ohms. This is 2 plus J 3 ohms. This is 2 plus J 4 ohms. So you're given the two load uh, currents. Right? So one way of solving it is, say if you know current in any branch, if you can find out the current in any branch, you can find in all the other branches. For example, if I know the current here, let us say in AB. So I have here three branches, right? AB, BC, and CA. Clear. So if I know, if I find out the current in AB, this is the incoming current. So I know the current here, it is 50 amperes at 0.6 PF. So I can find out BC. And if I know BC, I know here it is 100, so I can find out CA, right? And since I know both AB and AC, I can also find out what is the incoming current by applying KCL. So if you look at it from a network point of view, this boils down, this problem boils down to finding the current in any one of the branches. So we can apply Thevenin's theory. Okay, let us say I, I take one, any one of these branches as a load on the rest of the network. So in Thevenin's theorem, what do you do? At the port terminals, output port terminals, right? You are assuming the load to be connected at the output port terminals. Remove it. Find out the open circuit voltage at, at the port. Open circuit voltage at the port and the Evidence impedance at the port. Here, so that's what uh, uh, we will be doing now. So let me take BC as the port terminal. So if I take BC as the port terminal, now what will happen is 
I have to find out the Thevenin, the Thevenin's voltage, and I have to find the Thevenin's impedance. At which port? You can take any of the port. I have solved it taking DC. Okay. So this is what it is. Hmm. Fine. Now let's see how to go about it. So let us find the Thevenin's equivalent terminals at DC. Remove BC, find the open circuit voltage across it and the impedance at the terminals. Clear? Yeah. So I have removed BC. I have removed BC and I know this current. So you know the current here and you know the current here. Okay. So BC, the open circuit voltage here would be the voltage between B and C. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So I am here assuming that the line BC is the load. What is the value of BC? It is two plus J4. So we are assuming that at this port BC, a load of two plus J4 ohms is applied. So how do you do it using Thevenin's theorem? Remove the load. If I remove the load, this is the network. So open circuit voltage means, I will if I put a voltmeter here, What is the voltage it would measure? That is the open circuit voltage, phasor voltage, not just magnitude. Clear? Okay, so let's find out. Very simple. So what would be the voltage here? What would, what would be the voltage here? If I take this as a loop, right? If I take this, so the current here is like this. So this end would be positive and this end would be negative. And here the current is like this. So this is positive. And this is negative. And let us just take B is positive and B is negative. Right. So let's write from here. This is B. From here to here, there is a drop. There's a drop. So my KVL, I'm just telling you how to write the KVL, is V, A, B. Go in a loop. Go in a loop. There's only one loop here. So V, A, B. V, A, B. Then here again, there is a drop plus V, BC, okay. Then here, as I go around the loop here, there is a rise. So minus VCA is equal to zero. So this is what I have to find. VBC is what? What is VAB? VAB will be the current in IAB, right, into impedance of AB. VCA would be current in AC into impedance. Okay. What is the current? So current you have to take in the open circuit uh, network, not in the original network, in the open circuit network. So the current in AB is nothing but this, 50 amperes at 0.6 PM. Because, you see, right, so now you see, what is the current here? The current here is nothing but 50 amperes at 0.6 pm. And the current here is 100 amperes, 0.8 pm. So I can find the drop in these two lines. So simple, so simple. Okay, current in section AB is I1 is 50 at a power factor of 0.6. So that is 30 minus J40. And current in section AC is IAC is 100 at a power factor of 0.8. So that is 80 minus J60 amperes. Now voltage in section AB is IAB into ZB. This is IAB, this is IAB, and this is ZAB. ZAB is given in the data. So this is the voltage in section AB. And in AC, VAC is IAC. So look at the direction, huh? IAC. Just look at this. So it is from A to C. 
IAC into ZC. So I have here BAC. I have both in polar form as well as rectangular form. Same thing would be AB. Got it? Next, the potential difference between B and C at higher potential with B at higher potential. Just see the equation we wrote. VBC, okay, is equal to, if I if you take it to be equal to VCA minus VAB. Okay. So VAC minus VAB BAC is this, BAC is this, minus VAB is this. So that's equal to 241.96 plus J133.71. Okay. So this is your Thevenin's voltage, E Thevenin. This is the Thevenin's voltage. Now, let's get, get back to the network. So I need the impedance looking at these two terminals from this port. So what would be this would be these two in series because there is no, no branch impedance there. Therefore, Thevenin's impedance is the sum of the two impedances. It is 3.4 plus J 4.4. So now what has your uh, thing reduced to? Let's see here. I have found out V Thevenin. I have found out Z Thevenin across the port BC. So now here, let me connect ZBC. Okay, I will connect ZBC. So what will be the current here? What will be the current in this? It will be V Thevenin divided by Z Thevenin plus ZBC. So current through BC is E Thevenin divided by Z Thevenin plus Z BC. This is E Thevenin. This is Z Thevenin. This is Z BC. So I get the current. So just like multiplication, when you divide, you convert this to polar form and this to polar form. Divide the magnitudes. Divide the magnitudes and subtract the angles subtract the angle okay next current in section a b what will it be let's see here let's get back to the original network so i want the current in a b i know b c right and i know uh, this current this is 50 amperes at point five let us call it as i b so I can find out the current here. This is entering, this is leaving, this is leaving. So this will be the sum of these two currents. So we have the current IAB is equal to IB plus IBC. So IB is nothing but I1. So this is the current and this is IBC, which we calculated. So this is the current in section AB, the current in section a, B. Next, I need the current in section A, C. So be careful of the directions. Be very careful of the directions. Right? So let us say I want from A to C. It is like this. From A to C, this is entering. This is also entering and this is leaving. So it will be this current, I, C minus I, B, C. Okay? Whereas here, this is entering and these two are leaving. So here, this current is sum of these two. The current entering is equal to the sum of the current leaving. Here, these two enter and this is leaving. So that is, I'm taking the current from A to C. If you take the current from C to A, it will be opposite. Right? So be very careful. Draw the directions uh, properly and make your equations consistent with the directions you have shown. So current in section AC, IAC is I2 minus IBC. So I get 55.63 minus J, 46.86 amperes. Here, now uh, I would urge all of you to solve this problem. Instead of taking section BC, 
take section either AB or AC and solve it. So you should get the same currents. Current should not change. Yeah. So it, it will be also a practice to you about how to apply the Thevenin's theorem. So please do it. Please do it. Yeah. Next. A two-wire distributor, 1200 meters long, is loaded as shown. B is the midpoint. So that means it will be 600, 600 meters. The power factors at the two loads refer to the voltage at C. The impedance of AB and BC is this, 0.15 plus J.2 ohms. Calculate the sending end voltage, current and power factor if the voltage at point C is 220 volts. So here it is 220. Find the voltage at VA, the current. By now you should be easily able to solve this. Okay. So I know the current here. We have done this. I know the current here. So I can find the drop here. I can find out EBC. And then this will be VAB. VAB. And VA would be 220. So I'll take this as reference. So it will be 220 plus J0. Right? So it will be VBC plus VAB. So it will be 220 plus J0 plus VBC plus VAB would be the voltage at VA. So consider VC as the reference voltage. So you see I have taken the angle as 0 because it's the reference. Now ZAB, ZBC is same. Why? Because B is the midpoint. Because B is the midpoint. Now load current at point C, I will call it as I2, is 100 amperes at point 8 PF which is 80 minus J60 amperes. And current in section BC, that is I2, will be the same here. In BC, this will be same as this current. And in AB, the current will be the sum of these two currents. So the load current at point B is I1, that is 60 at a power factor of 0.9. So cos phi is 0 0.9, sin phi, so you take the inverse of that and find the sign is 0.4358, again minus because it is lagging. So this is the current in B. So the current in section AB will be I1 plus I2. This is I2, this is I1. So I get 134 minus J86.15, which is equal to 159.3 at an angle of minus 32.73 degree amperes. So this is the current in section AB. The voltage drop in section BC is IBC into ZBC. So this is IBC and this is ZBC. So the voltage drop is 22.36 at an angle of 26.3. 651 degrees and in section AB it's IAB into ZAB right so this will be the sum of the two currents and this is ZAB so I get this VAB so the total sending end voltage is VC plus VAB plus VBC again this is the reference this is VAB this is VBC and I get 278.32 at an angle of 4.92. You see, there's a huge drop. Sending end, the magnitude is 278 volts. Receiving end is only 220. Almost 58 degrees, 58 volts. Huge drop. That's because the length of the line is 1200 meters. Length of the line is also uh, large. It is 1200 meters. And again, as you see, you know, the voltage keeps dropping as you move further away from the feeding point. So angle between VAB, IAB and VA, right? So VA angle is 4.92 positive and IAB, 
IAB, if you look at it, this is the total current. It is minus 32.73. So V is at an angle of plus and I is at an angle of minus. So I is lagging VA. So I get a lagging angle. Always remember this lag and lead is with voltage as reference. When you say it's a lagging current, you mean the current is lagging the voltage, right? So here the voltage is at four degrees and current is just minus 32. So what is the total lag between the voltage and current? It will be 37.65 degrees. That minus we are putting to show that it is lagging. And our factor is 0.79, cos of that, which is 0.7917 degree lag. So we got all the parameters we wanted with respect to the sending end. Let's take uh, now one more. A single phase distributor has impedance so and so per conductor. It's a single phase distributor. At the far end voltage, VB is 200 volts. And current is 100 amperes at 0.8 PF lag. At the midpoint, a current of 100 amperes is tapped at a PF of 0.6 with respect to VM. So this 0.6 is calculate voltage at midpoint. Simple, very simple. So draw the figure. I have the feeding end. Then it is... Uh, Totally, it's a uh, distributor. M is the midpoint. I have 100 amperes here at 0 0.6 and here 100 amperes at 0 0.8, right? And the impedance is 0 0.1 plus point J.15. Point now, total impedance of the distributor, I multiplied it by 2. Why? It's a single phase system. Look at the, look at the way the problem is, data is worded. It's a single phase distributor and this is the impedance per conductor. So in a single phase, I have repeatedly told you, you have two conductors. So we multiply it by two. So at the midpoint is M, so half, right? The impedance of each section is half of it. Now let me take VB as the reference. It's 200 plus J0 and at the, Receiving end, I have a current of 100 amperes at 0.8 PF lag. And the current in the other section is not section. At that midpoint is I2 is 80 minus J60. So I can find out what is the drop in section. Just see here what I'm doing. I know the current here. So I find the drop in this section. If I add it to the receiving end voltage, I'll get the midpoint voltage. Very simple. So drop in section MB is IMB into ZMB. That's all. Since you're asked only midpoint voltage, you can stop here itself. Right? You don't have to go again, find out the total current drops. Nothing is needed. Let's do uh, one more problem. A single phase AC distributor is 500 meters long and has an impedance of 0.02 plus J.04 ohms and is fed from one end at 250 volts. The loading is as follows. 500 amps at UPF 200 meters from feeding point here, that is point D, 50 amps at UPF, and 100 amps at point P of 300 meters. So that is, this is already 200, so another 100 meters here, that is point C. I have 100 amperes at point eight. PF lag and 50 amperes 0.6 lag at the far end. Calculate the voltage at the far end. State any assumptions made. So now I have to make some assumption about the power factor because I've just told you it is 0.8 UPF, 0.6 something with respect to what? So we will make the assumption here that the power factors are with respect to the feeding end. Power factors are with respect to the feeding end. That means the feeding end. Okay. Now, current in AD is 
current in section AD is 50 amperes at UPF. Let's see here. Here I have 50 amperes at UPF, 100 at point 8, and 50 at point 6. So what will be the current here? It will be the sum of all these. That's what I want to find out, the current in AD. So what is it? It is 50, the first load at UPF, plus 100 at point 8 PF, and 50 at point 8 PF. This is at the receiving end. So this is the total current. This is the feeding point current, the sending end current. Now, impedance of section AD. So this is the impedance for 500 meter length. Section AD is 200 meters. So I multiply by 200 by 500. So this works out to 0 0.008 plus J.016. Sorry, it's not watts, it is ohms. Okay, impedance is so many ohms. So now voltage drop in section AD is current, this is the current, into the impedance. So this is the drop in section AD. Now, just see here, current in, in, in section DC. Here, what is the current here? The current here will be 100 amps 0.8 PF plus 50 amps 0.6, right? So if you call this as I3, this is I3. And if I call this as I2, so here we have done this problems earlier also, plus I2. And this would become I2 plus I3 plus I1. So current in section DC is 160 minus J100 minus 50. That means I'm removing the first one. I get 110 minus J100. Or you can add the last two. Either way you can do. So basically here what I have done, this is I1 plus I2 plus I3. I'm re removing I1. I'll get I2 plus I3. Impedance is 400 meters, it is 0 0.004 plus J.008. This is for 200 meters, so half of this. So I can find the drop in section CD is the current into the impedance. Next current in CB will be the last one. I3, which is 50 at an angle, 50 at a PF of 0.6. So I get the drop in CB. Okay, so now I get the total drop, total drop, total drop. Now, how much is the total drop? 5 plus J2.4 volts is the total drop. Now, what was my reference? I told you my reference was the feeding end voltage. In the other problems we saw, our reference was the receiving, far receiving end voltage. Here it's a feeding end voltage. Therefore, the feeding end is 250 volts. This is the reference. You see, I have put it as plus J0. So the sending end voltage minus the drop because this angle is with respect to sending end only. So it is sending end voltage minus drop. I get the receiving end voltage. That is approximately 245 volts. Whatever you angle you get here would be. So you see, since I'm given the sending end voltage and asked to find the receiving end voltage, I am considering the sending end voltage as the reference. If you're given the receiving end voltage and asked to find the sending end voltage, take the receiving end voltage as reference. The way you solve the problem is exactly the same. You only have to be careful about the reference and with respect to what you are referring the angles. Okay. Thank you. So in this session, we saw quite a few problems. We saw how to solve a problem with a ring, uh, uh, ring distributor. And uh, there essentially, you, it's very easy to solve using Thevenin's theorem. And uh, I have done a lot of problems in this session and in the previous session. And uh, I'll stop here. Thank you.